Guys, in this video, we are going to see an example of mutual inductance. In this particular problem, we have asked to find out the voltage across this 1 ohm inductor. Now, here we have the circuit in time domain. We are going to convert this one into phasor domain, and after that, we are going to solve for the voltage. Then, we are going to convert that voltage back into time domain. Okay. Now, in order to do that, first we have to convert all of these things. Let's redraw the circuit in phasor domain. So, here we are going to have the circuit. Let's redraw this one. Okay, this is our new circuit and this is open right here. And also we have a current source. And then here we have inductor. And that's it. And also we have to have a line in the middle. So let's draw this one right here. And here we have a resistance. Here we have a resistance. So let's leave a space for that one. Okay, let's plug the values. So first we have a current source and when we convert the current source from this uh, time domain to phasor domain, we are going to have the amplitude, that's 8, and the angle. Here the angle is not provided, it means this is a 0 degree. Okay, and when we convert the resistance from the time domain to phasor domain, it's not going to change. So this is still going to be 2 ohm. And when we convert the inductor from phasor domain, time domain to phasor domain, that's going to become J omega L. In our case, omega is equal to 4 because whatever the value multiplying this t, that's going to be our omega. So omega is equal to 4. 4 times 2, that's going to be 8. 8 times j, that's going to be just j8. Okay. So this is going to be j8. And here we are going to have j4. j4. And also we have to replace this dot convention with dependent voltage source. Okay. And in the dependent voltage source, we decide the plus minus based on the dot. Like if the dot, if the dot is on top, we have to have the plus sign on top. Okay, we have the dot on top of this inductor, so this plus should be on top of this one. Okay, and if the dot is below, we have to have the plus below. So we have to have the plus in the bottom, and then minus should be on top. And we are interested in finding this voltage. Now before I go ahead and plug the value for this one, it's better to reduce the mesh right here because we can do the source transformation in order to bring this one into one mesh. Okay, and we know that 8 times 2, that's going to give us the voltage source. And if I do that, I have to redraw the circuit again. So let's redraw this one. And here also we are going to redraw this one. And uh, let's get rid of this one. This is open. And here we have our voltage we are interested in. And then here we have a cut. This is going to turn into voltage source. Here we, we are going to have the resistance in series with this one. And here we are going to have these things. And that's it. Let's redraw everything. So this voltage source is going to be 8 times 2. That's going to be 16, right? So we are going to have 16 voltage with 0 degree. And uh, this resistance is going to be in series. So we are going to have 2 right here and then here we have the independent voltage source and also we have the impedance okay that's J8 and here we have the impedance and also we have the independent voltage source that's minus plus and let's put our mesh currents so let's put I1 right here and I2 for this mesh and from this one you can directly see I2 is going to be 0 because this is open, right? So I2 is going to be equal to 0. If the I2 is equal to 0, then voltage across this one is going to be equal to the voltage of this independent source. Now let's go ahead and plug the independent source values. For this source, we had to look at the current going through this one. And this is I2 and also the mutual impedance is going to be... Here we have the mutual inductance provided and J omega L we know that omega is equal to 4 so j times 4 times half that's going to give us j2 so j2 times i2 is going to be here and then j2 times i1 is going to be here okay and j2 times i1 is going to be the voltage across this one that's the question we are going to find this v so that's equal to j2 times i1 and if we find out i1 then we can find out the voltage okay to find out the I1, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the KVL, I'm going to apply KVL for this loop 
and if I do that this is going to become KVL for loop 1 and if you do that this is going to become negative 16 because the current is going from negative to positive so this is going to be negative 16 and then it's, this is going through the 2 ohm resistor so this is going to be plus 2i1 and after that this is going through the j2i2 plus 2 minus so this is going to be plus j2i2 and then after after that it's going through this J8 impedance so this is going to be plus J8 I1 the whole thing should be equal to 0 and we know that I2 is equal to 0 so we can get rid of this part this part is going to be just 0 okay so from this one we derived this equation now let's go ahead and add them together here we have negative 16 so we can say 2 plus J8 times I1 is equal to 16 okay therefore i1 is equal to 16 divided by 2 plus j8 and if you do that this is going to give you 1.94 negative 76 degree ampere so this is our i1 current and uh, if we multiply this i1 current with j2 that's going to give us the voltage that's what we are doing this right we are trying to find this voltage so voltage is equal to j2 times i1 we figure it out i1 that is 1.94 negative 76 degree and if you multiply you will get 3.88 negative 166 degree voltage so this voltage is in phase domain now we are going to convert this one into time domain so when we convert this is going to become v of t that's equal to this is going to be our amplitude 3.88 after that we plug this cos function so cos omega t in our case omega t is going to be 40 and the angle angle is going to be negative 166 degree voltage and this is going to be the voltage in time domain and that's how we do this kind of problems i hope this helps thanks for watching